Hi there, it's Nick Dutch here yet again. The great and glorious and be famous one day, yes. Guy talking to <laughs> talking to the camera on his mobile phone. <laughs> okay. Uh the reason for me to do this video today is that the most viewed video that I have done was called Demonology, How to Summon and Control Demons. It has attracted a lot of people who have asked me some questions of varying levels of intelligence. <laughs> and some of them were questions that were asked to me on the basis of strange experiences that a person had had. Uh, a few things I've got to do is to try and clear matters up. Firstly, the results of any form of New Age or occult ritual, meditation or the rest of it is not clear cut. There is no way of saying that I know what the result will be in advance. There's no way of even saying that you'll get a result at all. This is a experimental art. Although a definition of magic is the art and science of causing change to occur in conformity with the will, there are very few people who have mentioned or demonstrated the use of the scientific methodology or trying to come closer to the scientific methodology. However, it sh in my estimation, should be the goal of the individual to try and come as close to scientific methodology when investigating their own experiences and their own operations. However, lots of people just do not do this full stop. All right, the, therefore the results will, we will have to say are not concrete and clear cut. You yourself as an individual build up your own symbolism, your own spiritual and religious understanding. All occult ritual is essentially trying to get a religious experience and using that religious experience to try and create an effect. My personal experience suggests that prayer and meditation are the keys to try and achieve something of a strange nature. Now, when you're doing something like a, an inverted commas ritual, which could be, which is a very big umbrella term which covers a wide variety of different things, you could get a wide variety of different experiences or not, as the case may be. Trying to reach the state of a of prayer, which is reverence, tranquil, calm, serene, and naturally using the symbols of your religious understanding seems to be the way that things are done. My experiences also suggest that there may be interconnectivity of human minds to a certain degree. Therefore it's worthwhile playing around with and experimenting with. However, the experiences that different people have under different circumstances will be dramatically different. The experiences of one person will not be the same as the experiences of, of another person. If you've invested a lot of faith in your spirits, angels, demons, gods, goddesses, ghosts and the rest of it, and you feel that they can have some kind of influence over yourself. Do not draw their um, symbols and images on your flesh. Why? Because you do not want to ingrain in your mind the idea that these things can influence your body or your mind that much. I don't recommend this because it can be rather intense. Do not especially tattoo your body with these symbols because first you'll look very unfashionable and secondly if you have invested any belief in these spirits, angels, gods, goddesses, demons and the rest of it um, it could actually assist in creating a bit of a mind fuck which will stop you from being yourself one way or another if you just do a hell of a lot of meditation, prayer, ritual and the rest of it. Of course with some people it won't matter all that much because they won't have invested any, any faith in these things. So you can have your body covered with symbols from the, from the Lesser Key of Solomon if you saw fit. If you haven't actually invested tons of belief in these things, you've got to make an intelligent analysis of where your mind is with reference to anything that you've been playing with. Is it really up to anyone else to tell you? Well, maybe I shouldn't have actually said, no, you should not do this, all right? Maybe what I should have said is, it's up to you to work out how much faith you've actually invested in these things and to make an intelligence analysis on that basis.
from my point of view, there is no point in ascribing any hard and fast objective real existence to these things. Sure, I have had experiences of angels, demons, gods, goddesses, and ghosts. Yes. Does it mean to say they exist? No, it means to say I've had an experience that was rather difficult to uh, explain by normal means. It's an experience. Nothing more. Or should I say nothing less. But just because it's an experience does not mean to say that you have proof of the objective existence of these things. Apart from maybe in the case of remote viewing and astral projection and some telepathic type experiences. Okay. It is better to be slightly atheistic or agnostic when you're approaching the concepts of supernatural beings. Why? Because it will keep you saner. And maintaining your sanity is important. You don't want to end up like one witch I used to know, terrified of a piece of wood. You do not want to end up like a certain occultist who I used to know, terrified of certain phases of the moon. You do not want to, like certain individuals I have known, be terrified of using certain words in common language. Nor do you want to end up so concerned about your spiritual and magical power that you have to have occult paraphernalia with you under all circumstances. Relax. Stop taking it too fucking seriously. See it as an experiential experimental art. The last thing I want is for any of you to completely go mad and end up locked up because you watched one of my videos. There is no hard and fast laws of the hidden world because we just don't know these things. We can't. All people can do is to write down their experiences or mention their experiences. That's all. And then some people will take those ideas religiously and turn them into religions or put them, turn them into parts of their religion. But that's up to them and that's religious stuff. And if you're thinking about trying to be a artist and scientist of change and conformity with the will, then obviously you're, you should be taking a different point of view than someone who becomes a religious believer despite the fact you're using religious means to try and attempt to create some variety of change. Don't use the phrase, it works, because it can be deceptive when you're trying to communicate strange ideas to other people. Okay, it's a lie. To, to pretend or make out that there is an absolute result. Okay, you don't you don't want to draw people in who've got very serious needs. And then say this works, which is a very one-sided absolute statement. And then they spend days, months, weeks, or years trying to learn this technique and hey presto it doesn't do what they wanted. That's actually, that's actual cruelty. And if someone comes to you inquiring about magic, always ask them why they are interested. Okay? Just a few points. Bye for now.